What's going on, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys a review for uh, Little Women at Last, season four, episode two, titled Caught in the Middle. I know I'm like, what, two days late? Maybe three? Whatever. I know I'm late. I apologize. A lot's been going on. And, you know, today's a special day. It's my birthday. Yay to me. 31. I've been this motherfucker. But that's not why we're here, right? So. I'm going to try to speed through this because like that, I actually took notes on it. I just didn't have time to record it. So if I miss anything, it's because I am like I haven't reviewed it. Like, I just got done watching uh, Marriage of Medicine. So I'll be doing that immediately after this. So let me see. I'm trying to pick like, did, did we stop somewhere? Right. We did stop somewhere. Okay. Okay. So we're picking up at um the Sage Lady's uh, baby shower. Uh, and the whole Moreland and Moni fight. And, you know, he pretty much says that he didn't cheat when he was on the road. So, it's kind of conflicting, sort of, kind of. Because he did say that something happened before they got married. And I'm pretty sure you was on the road before. I don't, I'm not in a relationship, so I don't care. But he says he didn't cheat when he was on the road. But then he, you know, he 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 pulled a he pulled a uh, you know an ego move. You know, he was just like, listen to what I say when I tell you something. You know, we're married. You know, you don't you don't go against what I tell you. So almost trying to Jedi mind trick and shit. And he go he pretty much goes to Juicy and you know tell Juicy. Long story short, worry about Juicy now. I know a lot of people, especially with reality shows, you know, it's always the whole thing of men stay out of bitch shit. Now, this ain't bitch shit. This this is just regular shit, right? Now, on one hand, yes, Moreland could have told his wife, hey, you go talk to her. But it's one of those where I'm not mad at how he stepped to her, and I'm going to keep it all the way 1,000 with y'all. He could have came at her way works. I don't know if it's out of respect for Moni that he didn't do it. I don't know if it's because the cameras were <laughs> there that he didn't do it. But he was more respectful with the shit. Because he pretty much just told her, worry about you. You feel what I'm saying? And I and I understand it. Because the main, the main, my thing is this, like, if you were that concerned, because again, y'all, Y'all got to look at this shit from many different perspectives. On one hand, we know she messy. Now, if Juicy whole thing is, I'm trying to look out, you know, from a friend and whatnot, then she should have been like, why don't you call old boy and you get confirmation? The fact that she felt so... <laughs> the fact that she felt that that was the right thing for her, you know, I'm talking about Juicy, go sit here. And insert yourself in somebody else's business, you are absolutely fucking wrong. Even if you are looking out for your friend, there's ways to look out for your friend other than doing shit like that. And then you bring this shit up at somebody else's fucking event. Granted, yeah, we gotta get the first episode popping. So I get it. But still, she was wrong. And I'm gonna get more in the past. Not on, not on cheating, just on how he approached her. Because, again, I felt like he could have been, it could have been way, way worse. So, Andrea says that uh, she's having um some ear problems. That it smells, is uh, like pus and whatnot. She had mentioned that when she was younger, she had a tumor. And she's hoping that uh, that isn't the cause of it. And as much as we don't like Chris, I can respect the fact that Chris pretty much told her, take care of yourself, go to the fucking doctor. So, kudos to you, Chris. So Moni goes meet with the sage lady and she's going to be her backup because Tanya is, I'm not Tanya because I'm Tanya is sage lady. Sam is a little bit queasy. So that's that. They do some rehashing. I don't give a damn about the rehash because the whole rehashing was of the event, you know, with Moni more. Yeah, the whole Moni more. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. So, moving on. Now we got Moni and Sam. Now, 
they're at Sam's new apartment, and Sam pretty much says that, you know, she's trying to recreate her business because, you know, she, I forget where she, I think she said she was, I think she said New Jersey, I'm not sure, but pretty much she came from up north, and that she here, and it's hard rebuilding, and she's also going through it because, like I said, she has thin hair, she's always had, I think she said on her father's side, they have thinning of hair and hair loss. And, of course, stress doesn't help. And she's stressing about her business and whatnot. So that's not helping her either. <clears throat> and if I said money, I meant to say many, y'all. This is this is many and sound. If I said money, I'm sorry. All these damn M's and A's on here. And many says that she recommends wigs. And, uh, you know, she talks to her friend Jasmine, which she's bringing Jasmine down because Jasmine also suffers with uh, hair thinning, hair loss, and she wears wigs, <clears throat> trying to help her with her self-esteem. Um, so now we got Juicy and Sam. Juicy uh, gives uh, business advice to Sam, which it really isn't uncommon. She's just like, okay, you're in a new place. Do you have business cards? She's like, no, I don't. Now, look, y'all, I'm going to keep it all the way funky with you. Y'all can go to fucking vistaprint.com, get you some motherfucking business cards and shit. They always got promos going, so you can get you a stack for less than $10. So I'm sitting here like, okay, Sam. Okay, Sam. Like, I don't, like, I don't know if you're really going through it or not, but come on now. <clears throat> and she was hoping for the whole word of mouth, but you're in a completely different place. And I don't remember all the advice that she gave, but there's different things that you can do. You have some hairstylists that they do celebs hair for free for the promotion you know and you know juicy you're saying do somebody hair and especially they have social media take a picture with them let them you know up you all the other stuff there's different things that you can do now what i think excuse me i think sam was hoping being on this show was going to be all the promotion that she needs but I mean, Grant, I'm not going to go back and watch uh, season three, but I don't recall her doing hair season three. I recall her watching the Sage Lady's Kids, but I don't recall her doing hair. So you, you got you got to work on that, sweetheart. You got to work on that. And Juicy, Juicy says she doesn't like how Morley came at her and feels that uh, Moni should have done more, should have protected her. I don't really know how to feel about that. I, I really don't. I, I can understand her whole fact of, you know, this is my friend. I was trying to help my friend. And I guess she was trying to allude to that the man stepped out of his place by addressing her. Here's the thing. I, I don't know how to feel about it. Because on some real shit, you can't put yourself in somebody else's fucking situation, somebody else's fucking problem, and then get mad when the shit come back on you. You can't sit here and play with fire, then your ass get burned, and you want to be mad at somebody else. I can't wait for this shit to refocus. You started the fucking fire. This was all you're fucking doing, so I'm just like, I, I, okay, Juicy, miss me with the bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? And again, <laughs> I hope these girls are learning that Juicy does not have a storyline. The only thing that Juicy does on here is she promotes whatever business she has and uses them girls as storyline, which I ain't mad at her. Make your money, make it honest, and keep your business out of it and exploit theirs, but whatever. What, what, what the fuck else we got? So, Andrea and Amanda, so she's going to get her ear drained. <clears throat> and Andrea tells Amanda, okay, well, I'm pregnant. And the only reason that she told her is because since her sister was there for to get her ear drained, she would have had to have brought up to the doctor that she was pregnant just to make sure that, you know, they don't give her anything that can, you know, fuck with the pregnancy and whatnot. But she tells uh, Amanda, do not tell our parents. Don't tell the girls either. <laughs> Definitely don't tell our parents. Um, Sage Lady and Moni, I didn't write shit there only because... I mean, Sage Lady got mad because how Moni was fucking, you know, responding to the shit of, you know, and I mean, how the fuck, like, she's talking about, okay, giving birth in the water, okay, she's talking about taking the placenta, having it dried out, putting it in capsules, swallowing the shit, I think the midwife talking about some what we can, you know, put in the smoothie for you to try, I can see Moni feeling the kind of ways, so now, that, now she and her motherfucker feeling something about the only motherfucker, am I jumping ahead, I might be jumping ahead of myself, you know why I'm jumping ahead, ahead of myself? Because actually, this scene was when they went to go pick up the uh, fucking damn little 
swimming pool. But I'm gonna go ahead and merge two damn scenes because, like I said, I fuck Sage Blade. I don't like her. But um, she pretty much says that even though this is Nico's baby and she appreciates the fact that he's been stepping up, she only wants positive energy. So Nico can be in the house, but he can't physically be in the room where she gives birth. It's pretty much going to be her mother, Vaughn, and I think she said the cherub. That's it. Sam, Jasmine, and uh, Minnie, they go wig shopping. It gets a little too... It, it starts from being fun to a little bit. It becomes overbearing for Sam because it's like her whole thing is she doesn't want to sit here and wear a wig that doesn't look realistic to her. You know, it's just like for her to sit here and have like platinum blonde hair, it doesn't look right because that's not her natural hair. And because she's in the beauty industry, that could be a fucking turn off. She has a breakdown. Doesn't want to do it again. More than money. Is it money? Yeah, she's making the case. <clears throat> Call him. She pretty much feels that he needs to apologize to Juicy. And he pretty much told her, I ain't gonna do it. Fuck that. Fuck this. She needs to stay the fuck out of her business and stay, you know, like, she needs to stay out of business, stay in her own business. That's all the fuck that was. Andre and Chris, um, Andre is worried if the tumor is going to come back. And she also tells, um, and she's also feeling like that she might have to choose between her health and the baby. I really kind of, I really didn't get that, but oh, okay. okay. I'm guessing that if the tumor is there and they have to go in, that I guess the stress and everything could affect the baby this, that, third. I don't know for y'all who, who doctors out there, you know, correct me, get me together. Then she uh, tells Chris that she told Amanda that, that she's prego and he feels some kind of way because, you know, she's always in this business. You know, the family doesn't already like him or whatnot. And it's one of those where I feel him, but, you know, you kind of brought this shit on yourself. But again, I applaud him for actually stepping up and do Granted, I'm not going to sit here and give him kudos and shit for doing what the fuck he's supposed to do because he still ain't shit motherfucker. But. I applaud him for, you know, stepping up to do what he should have been doing from Jump Street, okay? But he tells her that she needs to tell her parents before Amanda does. Now, many as you see, they talk. And this right here is funny because of everything that happened between their asses last season. And uh, they talk about, well, Sam. What's Sam going through? And then pretty much they're going to have a wig party. You know, to kind of, you know, make Sam feel better about having a wig and shit. When the issues with Moni come up, and Juice Hill thing is, I would never think that I'd be talking to many about my juice, my issues with Moni, but hmm, here we are. And she says that the uh, wig party is going to be at the same place that my mama threw the wings at you. <laughs> Shady. All right, so the next scene was actually with the, with the sage lady and the whole shit, you know, with the pregnancy and shit, I don't give a fuck. We at the wig party. Juicy gives Moni the fuck the fucking cold shoulder. I hollered. I fucking hollered. And it's one of those where it wasn't even fucking warranted, to be honest. But, you know, hey, you got to have a scene to have a scene. Maybe it was warranted. Y'all let me know. You feel what I'm saying? Because on some real shit, if I stir the motherfucking pot, I can't get mad at my friend for some shit that I fucking started. But again, that's just me. They talk about respective insecurity, about how all of them have insecurities and you know, some of them actually share the same thing. And one thing that I did appreciate is them saying that you sometimes have to open up because you never know what the other person is going through. And sometimes in opening up, you might realize that you have more in common with somebody else. But a lot of times people in general, we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to share what our insecurities are. We don't want to share our shortcomings for a sign of weakness. And sometimes being vulnerable, people can take that wrong with this and third. But it was nice to see them. In that moment, Moni apologized after Juicy. They kiss, they make up. That was the episode. So even though this wasn't a quickie, I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I touched on everything. So that's all. I, and on some real shit, I think had I gave y'all the review the same bit I wrote these notes, it probably wouldn't. Have, this review probably would have been shorter. But that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys momentarily. Ooh, excuse me for um, Mary to Madison and. If you guys don't happen to watch the video, I do want to say, uh, in, in general, happy holidays. Like I said, I just finished uh, celebrating our Hanukkah. Uh, but if you celebrate the winter solstice, you celebrate Krampus, Christmas.
Christmas, Kwanzaa, whatever it is. Happy holidays. I love you all. Like I said, it's all about diversity over here. And again, just because, you know, I celebrate, you know, Hanukkah don't mean that I'm going to sit here and be mad that y'all celebrate Christmas. So happy holidays to you all. I don't know what the next video is going to be because I don't know what the schedules are. I might come on. I might do something. I don't know. We'll see. So that's all I got. And again, if I don't, if nothing else comes on between now and the new year, then I will see you guys January 1st for, um, excuse me, actually second when the video will probably come out. But I'll see you between the first and the second for uh, Love Hip Hop um, Miami. Peace.